So we are going to talk about ISLM. We are putting them together. So I'm going to draw just one graph for ISLM and I'll task you to go and do the rest, all right? So IS curve is like this, LM curve is like this. As a matter of fact, okay, listen to me carefully. As a matter of fact, so really this is IS and this is LM curve. As a matter of fact, when there are changes in the equilibrium, we can draw eight different graphs. We can have a situation where both IS and LM are increasing. We can have a situation where both IS and LM are decreasing. We can have a situation where IS increases, LM decreases. We can have a situation where LM increases, IS decreases. We can have a situation where LM is constant, IS or LM is constant, IS decreases. And we can have a situation where IS is constant, LM either increases or decreases. So when it comes to examining this concept, you must look at all those possibilities. So I'm going to explain one of them to you, and then you will go and do the rest. Once you understand the basis, you must be able to do the analysis I'm talking about. So when there is equilibrium in the goose market, that is IS, and there's equilibrium in the money market, that is I, um, LM, you have equilibrium interest rate and you have equilibrium income, all right? Equilibrium interest rate and equilibrium income. Now, let's look at number one, effects of increases in government expenditure. effect of increases in government expenditure. Now, if government expenditure increases, okay, the IS is going to shift to the right. And in the other lesson, I taught you why the IS curve will shift. It will shift because of fiscal policy, all right? So let me name this IS1, IS1. So it will shift this way. IS1. Now, when it shifts, we can see that, of course, the interest rate will rise and then the income will also rise. Okay. The interest rate will rise and then the income will rise. So, interest rate will rise from IE to I1. The income will rise from YE to I1. Why does this happen? Let's do the analysis together. Now, if government expenditure increases, okay, we all know that income is going to increase. At the same interest rate, income is going to increase. Remember that. We all know that at the same interest rate, income is going to increase. So income will increase from YE to YQ, all right? It will, it, will, it will initially increase to this point, like here. Okay. Now, the goose market is in a problem but the financial market is in a disequilibrium. It is in a disequilibrium because now, because income has increased, money demand will increase. Remember that money demand is a function of transactions or income or output. I, I told you that earlier. So once income has increased, money demand is going to increase. Now, if money demand increases, holding money supply constant, interest rate is going to rise. Okay. Yeah. Holding money supply constant, interest rate is going to rise. Now, if interest rate rises, it is going to discourage investment. So let's look at the scenario. Income will increase to this point. If income increases to this point, there'll be a distortion in the money market. So in the money market, if income has increased, there's an indication that money demand has increased. Now, if money demand has increased, holding money supply constant, interest rate will rise. Now, if interest rate rises, okay, if interest rate will rise, it will discourage investment. If investment is discouraged, national income equilibrium is going to fall. So this is the dynamics. 
So the dynamics is that it will move this way, but because money demand has increased as a result of increase in national income, the interest rate will shoot up this way. And when the interest rate shoots up, it will cut this portion of increase in income because it will reduce national income if interest rate goes up. There's an, always an inverse relationship between interest rate and national income because once interest rate goes up, it will discourage investment. And once investment is discouraged, national income will fall. So the final equilibrium will be at Y1. Okay? I could have just thought the Y1, but I wanted you to see that the, the movement, the dynamics of the movement, all right? So what I want you to try is you can, you can look at effects of increase in taxes. You can go and try that. Then number three, you can try effect of expansionary monetary policy. Then you can look at effects of contractionary monetary policy. So today I've taught you effect of increase in taxes. I've taught you effect of increase in, sorry, I've taught you effect of increase in government expenditure. If you go and work the effect of increase in taxes, you realize that when taxes increase, the IS will shift to the left this way. And when the IS shifts to the left, it means that income will decrease. And when income decreases, it means money demand will decrease. And when money demand decreases, it means interest rate will fall. All right. And the national income will also fall. So I want you to go and do some of these analysis. In our lesson, in our next lesson, I'll give further example. All right. Okay. So this will bring us to um, a slight introduction of ISLM analysis. In the next lesson, um, we'll discuss some further examples of ISLM. Any questions? <laughs>